Hey guys, Michael here with Pre-Approve Me, and today I'm going to walk you through our platform and show you exactly why Pre-Approve Me is the best place in the mortgage industry to attract, engage, and convert more real estate agents and more borrowers, okay? Our purpose as a company is to help you engage your clients and your real estate agents for long periods of time. Now, there's a lot of functionality in here that kind of crosses through other types of tech stacks you might use on a consistent basis. So a lot of people like to put us in the point of sale category. Some people say we're in the CRM category. What I say we are is we're in the customer engagement category. Anything that your client touches throughout the process of the deal should be done in one spot. Not only because it creates a better customer experience, but because it makes it consistent for your clients to engage with you long term. And so let's walk you through start to finish what this looks like. And today, specifically, we're going to be looking at how our integration with LendingPad works with pre approve Me. Now, what you're looking at here, guys, is a loan application. This is available on mobile, on the website. You can paste this into your email signature, add it to your, um, you know, wherever you have forward-facing loan applications. They're going to continue through the application. I'm going to go ahead and submit it as a borrower. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, guys. But essentially what you'll notice is this is a very responsive deal. And I'm going to go ahead and click through. We're giving positive progress. They've made it through this section. We use dynamic-based logic to determine should we ask for more information. So if I put I've only lived here one year, we're going to ask for a second year. If I put here we live two, we're going to ask for nothing more. I'm going to skip the rest of this, but one important note is we use the data collected in the loan application. After I sign these authorizations, you'll see we use the data to determine what kinds of loan documentation we should be asking this customer for. So, and it's all customizable. You can create a set of rules. Now it's out of the box, it's set up for you. But you can create a set of rules that is, if this, then that. If borrower says it's a purchase, ask for these things. If they're self-employed, ask for these documents. <clears throat> now your client submitted the application. They've signed their authorizations. You're gonna have copies of those. And I'm gonna go ahead and go here and create a password. Now keep in mind, this is what your borrowers are seeing. Okay, so now we're in the customer's portal here. Okay, this is where you get dropped. After you just saw me, uh, you know, submit my password, it's gonna drop them into a web portal. Now, if they're on their phone, it's gonna direct them to download the mobile app, okay? But even if they're using the computer, we're also gonna text them, uh, invitation to the mobile app, and we're also gonna send them a list of the conditions based on the data in the loan application. So as a, as a borrower now, I can go through here, and again, this is a really, this is not a real list, this is a test account. You can customize what docs you're asking for, but I'm gonna start grabbing documents and I'm gonna start uploading them. There it is, boom, upload that document, okay? The customer's docs that they've completed or that they've submitted are gonna go down here into tasks in review, tasks in review. So as a loan officer, what I'm gonna do is get a notification that they've submitted documentation and I'm gonna go into the loan itself and I can review it. So I'm in my conditions area here and I'm opening up my conditions and what I'm looking for is any document that says files. Okay, so I'm gonna move this one back up to this area. You see where it says one file? Okay, I'm gonna click on that document and I'm gonna review the condition that was uploaded. Based on that, I'm going to provide a status update, accepted or rejected. If it's rejected, you can give them a reason. You wanna add, you wanna click this button to tell them why. Uh, after you add the reason, click accepted. It's gonna move it off the to-do list and it's going to move it down into a completed category. Now, here's the thing with LendingPad, okay? Once the loan application came in, almost immediately, this loan synced with LendingPad. You can see it right there, link to LOS. You can also, you see there's a button here to open the loan in LendingPad because what happens is once we send it to them, they pass us the loan number and the URL and we make it very easy for you to just click a button and as long as you're logged into LendingPad, it's gonna open up the interface. You're gonna dial in all the details on the loan application in here, okay, in LendingPad. 
So you dial in the subject property details, you finish up looking at their income, pull their credit, you're gonna price the loan out, run to you, do your normal originating activity. Once it's done and you save those changes, within five to 10 minutes, that information is gonna go from LendingPad back to pre-approve me. And there's a very specific reason why. Let me show you. When the data comes back from LendingPad, it's gonna build what we call the loan officer approved scenario, okay? What the loan officer approved scenario does is it builds a framework for allowing your customers to get access to pre-approval letters. So I've got my income, my debts, my assets, and I've got my loan details here. So I've got my subject property information, loan type, all that stuff is really dialed in. And what we're looking to do is compare the TBD property information with the customer's finances to a series of loan program guidelines. So on the right here, excuse me, on the right here you see the loan program guidelines and I am measuring all of this data against those guidelines. So what happens if I drive up the price of the home? Let me take it to 500K, let's find out. Okay, our DTI is too high. Look at that, we're at 51. I had this customer set to a restriction of 47. Identifying the issue is as easy as looking at the red areas or reading the actual description of the issue. So what if I took this to 10% down payment? That's a problem. Doesn't look like we have enough assets anymore. Our DTI is in line now because we've moved the, the loan amount down, which reduced our DTI, but now we've got a separate restriction which would stop your clients from getting a pre-approval letter from the mobile app. Okay, so in this case, I'm gonna put it back to five. I'm gonna reduce my loan amount to 400. And the nice thing is, guys, you won't have to do this very much. If you're dialing in the, the information in LendingPad, it's syncing it over to us. As long as you spent a little bit of time making sure that your guidelines in your settings inside of Pre-Approve Me are dialed in and they're a good foundational framework, most of the deals you send over are gonna meet those guidelines, okay? Very few cases, maybe one out of every you know, five, where you need to go in here and just say, you know what, maybe they're qualified for a little bit more from a DTI perspective. Maybe, they're, maybe they need a little less down payment, right? DPA program. So then how does this loan officer approved scenario affect your customers? Well, of course we have the web portal Right, but we also have the mobile app. And so here's where things get really, really cool for you. We're talking about customer engagement, okay? That's the whole purpose of the system is. Get your clients in early, give them the tools they need when and where they need them, okay? Your clients need different tools at the very beginning of the process, right? Brand new customers, they have different questions than people who are shopping for homes. So what we do is we actually allow you to transform the interface, the system your clients are using, and tie it to a loan status. So what we see is I've got a processing status a lead. This is just a raw person who's applied for a loan. I'm gonna change this client to pre-approved now because now they're qualified and I know they're going to go from my office or from the conversation I had with them on the phone immediately onto Zillow, immediately. They're gonna start looking for homes. I wanna empower them with the tools they need to stay engaged with me as their loan officer while they spend all of their time searching for real estate. It's a big problem actually for most loan officers because they are literally spending all their time with the top lead aggregators in the country. They make nearly all of their money selling your customer's information to somebody else. So I'm gonna confirm those changes and you can see here the interface has changed. So now my clients, I'm telling them on the phone, hey, if you've got questions about what your payment is, if you qualify or if you need a pre-approval letter, go back into the app, go back into the web portal that we provided you, and you're going to be able to run those numbers, identify if they qualify, and issue a pre-approval letter in real time, okay? There's lots of fail-safes in here, guys. They have to confirm several times, okay, what's the property taxes, what's the insurance. This will go on the email that gets delivered to you, to the borrower, to the realtor, when that actual letter gets sent out. But as easy as that, they've got a letter, okay? And they didn't have to pick up the phone and interrupt your day to get it, okay?
okay? They feel empowered. You feel scale, right? You feel the ability to actually have a personal life. And that's what we want for you, okay? That's what customer engagement is about in as far as technology is concerned. Okay, so now we've got this. Now, what else can they do? They can track loan progress. Where's the deal in, in uh, the pipeline? Okay, what's next in the process? We sync and connect your lending pad, uh, critical dates and processing dates. You can connect the two so that if you were to trigger a critical date inside of here for pre-approved as an example. So I'm in this loan. That's loading. While that's loading, I'll show you. You connect the dates inside of here. So here's our status, appraisal ordered. Okay, that's the update. Boom, that's the next thing on the list. Okay, appraisal requested is the critical date or the processing date that's firing that request. It's telling us, hey, send an update to your clients, to your realtors, etc. The goal of our platform in this stage is to play offense, right? Use this tool as a way to get in front of your client's questions. So if you were to ask your client, um, hey, I, or if you were to tell your client, I have ordered your appraisal, what kinds of questions are they going to have for you? When's it going to come back? What happens if it comes in below value? Am I going to get a copy? Can I be there for the inspection? There's a million questions you can think of off the, off the top of your head of what kinds of uh, things that your clients would want to know. Well, empower them, right? Keep driving them back to the system because it trains them to use the platform as opposed to having to lean on you to get the information, okay? And the beautiful thing is because of the way we brand this, okay, completely customizable for you, for your company, uh, you can add your, your real estate agents co-branded in there. It is a value that they attribute to you bringing them the information they need, okay? So in this case, I would say something like, hey, appraisals come back in about a week. We're going to review it when it's, when it's done. Um, if there's any issues, we'll be sure to let you know. But usually once we have the appraisal, we resubmit for final approval and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Connect it to the right integration number. And then when we're in lending pad, you can have that critical date, send the information over to us. Very simple. Okay. And there's videos, guys, how to do all that. We don't have to worry about that today. Now, the other thing is, once you've approved conditions in the system, I want to show you. Here we go. Cancel this. Once you approve conditions and pre-approve me, it's going to show up in the documents area. So I can go here to documents. And here are all the conditions that I accepted in pre-approve me. So if I go to here, all the conditions that I accepted down here that have files attached, are going to exist inside of the documents area in LendingPad. Now we also integrate with Dropbox. We're working on Box integration, a OneDrive, Google Drive, and so we can send the documents to separate cloud storage devices or areas too if you want. But most of the time, it's sufficient to get them into the system of record, so you guys can audit the file. If your processor uses this system, it's in there. Okay. Now, with that being said, your processors probably want to use this system to request conditions because we do automate reminders uh, completely. You can build condition sets. One location for updating conditions would mean your client gets an email, a text, the web app updates, and the mobile app updates. So it's completely, uh, it's so scalable for you. And you can know that it doesn't matter where your customer uh, is comfortable from a technology perspective there is a, a way for them to handle what they need to. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the mobile app. And here's where things get even cooler. So I showed you how things changed from lead to loan. Well, I also build a status in here for closed. So how do I engage my clients after the deal closes? What kinds of tools do I want to give them? Well, we've integrated with third-party services like HomeIQ and HomeBot to allow that to allow your mobile app to bring more value to them long term. So I'm going to mark this loan closed and you'll notice over here I've got a property address. Pre-approve me is going to send home IQ or home bot the address and they're going to return to us a link to access that customer's equity report. We're also going to 
query Google and we're going to update the mobile app to show a picture of their house. Okay, so here it is, guys. Post-closing, what can the clients do? I can drop directly into my equity report. So now I know as a borrower, this is where I go if I want to look at information about my home. Okay, again, it's inside your mobile app. So completely branded, engaged in the system. If they get new phones, if you have a native app, for example, if you buy a native app from us uh, and that exists in the store, it's going to follow them through devices. So it's a really, really cool way to engage your customers long term. So what other kinds of tools would you want to add, right? So if you're sending a lot of loans to um, a company that services, maybe they can even make payments in your mobile app, right? So embed your payment gateway directly into it. They can just make payments just like that. Uh, refer a friend. Maybe you've got a lot of um, resources, contractors, movers, house cleaners, uh, maintenance people. Build a custom tool for them so they have access to resources in their area. The sky's the limit, guys. You can completely customize what exists in here. The name of the game is engagement. So from start to finish, you want an interface that not only lets them apply, but lets them move through the loan process, the home search process, and the home ownership process very smoothly and cleanly. And with our integration with LendingPad, which is extremely robust, you shouldn't have to do very much work inside of pre-approve me in order to create that experience for your customers. So I hope you're as excited as I am about this integration and about keeping your customers engaged long term.